Yo, what's going on? So, back at it pretty recently because I'm the more I think about it, I probably uh, don't want any future update videos to be like super monstrous, you know. So I'm actually trying to do these in rapid succession uh, because I've picked up a couple, you know, obviously between the however many months that I spent between doing, you know, the first one and the last one, or you know, the first one and the, yeah, and this last one. Yeah. What the fuck am I saying? Uh, I've gotten, you know, a few records in between, and, you know, while the gap isn't that big, I feel like the more I spend doing that, the more I will have to dedicate thereafter to being like, oh, and I still have to do, like, four update videos to actually be up to date. And that feels, you know, like, not conducive with the idea of an update. So, um, yeah, that's my basis behind this. So hopefully I'll just, you know, actually do these in some decent succession, maybe dole them out once every other week or something like that, because, you know, that's what my schedule kind of allows for. Uh, and, you know, for those of you that don't care, far out, man. You do you. But, uh, yeah, finished up on Fleetwood Mac. Moving on to Fleet Foxes. Fantastic. Fantastic. Group. Psych pop, uh, really this, you know, almost anachronistic sound. This feels like it was recorded, you know, centuries ago, and they just managed to remaster it here and now, but obviously the themes and the recording, of course, um, are better than they were when there were no recordings. Uh, yeah, all the materials, pretty fantastic in its own way. That uh, this is of course the copy that comes alongside the Sun Giant EP that they did, which you know makes it nice and easy. Pretty tight packaging, pretty plain, but that's totally fine. And uh, I'll take it. Then you guys follow up. Helplessness Blues also very good. Probably I think I like this one a little bit more. I feel like. Uh, some of the themes and topics, you know, brought up in this record are a little bit more engaging to me personally, uh, but nonetheless, another fantastic release from them. I am a, you know, pretty big mark of this fan, uh, group by this point, just on black. A little bit of a thicker cardstock on the, uh, the record itself, which is nice. And, uh, yeah. Stand up for me this year. I don't think it's going to end up making it into my top 10, but uh, still. Very nice record. I think that in incorporating some more indie tronic sounds and really like reaching outside of his comfort zone, uh, lyrically, Pecknold is, I believe, how you pronounce it, uh, kind of went above and beyond with this record in a lot of ways. And while it's not a totally seamless transition, I feel like there's some slightly awkward moments that come out of this record i would say that on the whole very interesting very lovely release and whoop, a pretty fantastic return to form after six years of studio silence and i believe that oh yes 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 let me reach all the way in there i actually had a chance to get this like club edition which had uh Oop. This one colored wax, which is now going for tons. Whoopsie daisies. Uh, my fault for not. Uh... No, nope. This is whatever. If anyone wants, eh, I probably didn't. I didn't need that because I got Apple Music. Bang bang. Uh, but you know, if anyone wants a copy of this record, it's good. Uh, digital copy. That's the code on the thing that I just showed you. Uh, the fuck was I saying? Where was I going with my life? Fuck! Whatever. Flying Lotus. Los Angeles. Uh, you know, fantastic electronic producer. Very, very significant in the current musical landscape, obviously. You know, heavy working with, uh, Kendrick, the brain fever, uh, I guess it's, what would you call it? The sub 
little splintering off of the work label that he's got going on has been releasing a lot of amazing material really interesting music from that and of course his own music is very much worthwhile one of the more significant electronic producers of this day and age this came out in 2008 i believe and it's a really good you know really interesting producer really uh punchy oftentimes pretty succinct like two minute tracks uh, with a strong jazz feel to them. This continues with Cosmic Rimmo. I'm <laughs> struggling to come up with the name. All of these have this really nice glossy finish, which I'm usually not a huge fan of the glossy finish, but I feel like for his aesthetic, uh, it uh, definitely is becoming for it. And uh, this, of course, you know, introduces some slightly, you know, punchier elements. It's got a almost a video game music kind of feel to it, which makes it a lot of people's favorites. I think that I like uh, Los Angeles a little bit more, but still, great record. Enough for me to want to pick it up physically. So yeah. And uh, my only other Lilo release so far, not much of a surprise to anyone, I'd imagine. Woo, you're dead. Great, great. This He really channels his jam, his, uh, jazz tendencies into a full-fledged like new jazz release and it is dope uh never catch me with kendrick is probably one of the best tracks that he's ever you know come out with so good shit fam squad all these are in black nothing too exciting i should probably you know do the little because this is a cool he's got some cool art design on this whoa feels very uh like reminiscent of 80s anime or something like that, that really, you know, exceedingly gory, you know, brains exploding, uh, what's the name of it, Evangelion, uh, Elvin Lied type, you know, gore, cool shit, cool shit, and, uh, ooh, one of my, uh, favorite electronic releases from electronic ambient etc etc releases of 2017 this is forced swords with compassion some really nice moving bustling uh ambient pieces i think like a faint little dub influence on it it's really a unique blend of styles i ended up finding the deluxe version at the store which only cost like a dollar or two extra because you know Shout out to Princeton Record Exchange. They know what's up. Uh, but yeah, it's real thick sleeves. Oh, this one also has a download code. If anyone wants to, uh, hopefully you can, you know, if you're interested enough, you can read that backwards, check it out. But yeah, it came out on this real thick, you know, milky, clear wax as well so you know i thought for all that uh it's got some bonus material on it as well a little extra goodies for the two dollars extra i'm spending yeah i'll absolutely go for the deluxe edition so yeah dope shit oh also one of the big things about it was this really cool little booklet with uh you know all pictures of this, that, and the other. Very nice. Some good fucking aesthetics. And, uh, Hell yeah, fam squad. I'm awful. I'm an awful person. Uh, and then, you know, some more electronic stuff. This is a... It's weird that I get runs like this. Um, but, yeah. For Tet with pink, I believe. Pink or blue, I don't Fucking names, dude. Fucking names. But, um, yeah, only for Tet Record at the moment because, you know, it was like a club edition type thing, easy to pick up. Um, I've been looking to, you know, get some of his back catalog stuff because I remember his 2010 release as well as his fucking, I think it's Rounds. Rounds is the name of it, yes, is really interesting to me. So, Amongst other stuff that I need to do a little more digging on. Not 
intimately familiar with his back catalog, unfortunately, but yeah. This was a series of pretty beefy singles that he released around 2012 that he compiled into this little set of tracks. Uh, this is where he's coming a little bit more into a purely electronic sound, whereas, you know, his earliest works took a lot of more organic instrumentation into the blend. He's kind of progressing into an uh, IDM kind of uh, direction with these, and it hasn't yielded great results. I feel like it's been kind of spotty for the most part. Um, but this collection, for the most part, hits. So I was like, yeah, yeah, fun. And I don't have enough... Uh, records in that style. So, definitely worth my time. Uh, moving uh, right along. Frank Zappa Hot Rats. Holy fuck. This thing is grimy as shit. I love this release. This is great. Uh, the fucking opening riff to uh, Willie the Pimp is probably the most, like, ugh, insatiably badass thing to get printed or pressed onto wax ever it's just all good but yeah you know classic record one of frank zappa's best i would say they decided to make a gatefold out of it which is cool only a single disc so you know it's pretty standard packaging mine's nothing special still great record great record um then we got a Pinata, whoa, really fantastic uh, gangster rap record from Freddie Gibbs. Probably his most, uh, you know, reputable due to his pairing with the infamous Mad Lib, who puts out some fantastic material on this release. Gibbs kills it. I mean, it is just loaded with highlights. This is a fantastic piece of rap music. So, I don't know, that's just great. Back to front. I got, I think, the uh, Newberry Comics release is what I later figured out it was. And it came on an actual, like, split of black and white. It's kind of, you know, like, faded. It just kind of blurs the line between what's what. Nice, nice, classy little thing. And, of course, the, uh, the label on there looking real snazzy, kind of breaking up that dichotomy a little bit it's nice it's nice it's a good job it's pretty plain otherwise but it's nice see so, yeah. great rap record and uh I'm gonna finish off my apps i believe and i still have a lot of time she's not been killing it bugazi repeater wow really great record really great i need to get more fugazi but um there was just one day when I was just like feeling really punk, I walked into the uh, record store and I got, you know, like this, I got Dead Kennedys. I just like cleared out everything they had of that, you know, classic era of, you know, punk, hardcore, etc. And it was great, 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 great. Very clean packaging. It's it's a punk record and, you know, I don't, it's on black, so, you know. Fugazi. Fugazi. Yeah, guys, I'm, I'm I'm a liar. I'm a liar. I have, I have two more Fs. Oh, jeez. The score. Wow. Really great piece of, you know, conscious, jazzy rap from the 90s. Had a pretty nice uh, commercial breakthrough with, uh, what's the name of it? Killing Me Softly, the music video for that, with, like, the popcorn, the... And of course, uh, I think, what is it, Fujila, fantastic. Recently been getting a lot of love. I heard it sampled like twice in the past uh, two years on some reputable, well, you know, reputable, quote unquote. It was, uh, it was sampled pretty heavily on the uh, Nas joint off DJ Khaled's uh, Major Key Project as well as Moonlight off of uh, Jay-Z's new project. So, I don't know, I just remember that very clearly because it's a very prominent, you know, iconic sample with a la 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 la, you know, I can't sing. Uh, but yeah, great record.
Oh. And this pressing was pretty snazzy because it not only came on, of course, of course, this beautiful translucent orange black split. Wow, very nice. But it also came with a uh, don't fall over. But even in addition to the don't come fall over thing that I just said, it came with a fucking old seven inch with Fuji La. And what else did it have on this? Oh yeah, no, it's just remixes of Fuji La, which is pretty dope. Because it's, you know, it's just on straight orange. Because I guess having a split on that would be kind of I don't know. I don't really know. But yeah, Fuji's. And then, I was pretty recently actually. Funkadelic Maggot Brain, the fucking heaviest, densest, arguably best funk record out there. This is heavy as shit. You know, George Clinton fucking destroys on this. It is beautiful and got the, you know, it's iconic. It is. Ugh. Yeah, that whole splinter thing you get. It feels like a very old record, but uh, in fact, a pretty new one. And uh, I think the wax on this is, yeah, it's got this like a real dark, murky red. This record's heavy as shit too. But yeah, this this is what a blood record should look like, for what it's worth. I think you know, with those like streaks of black. You know, this looks fucking menacing on the table. I only say that because I have like a billion records that are labeled as blood red and it's just like a very looking plain red. Like, what kind of blood's like that, man? But, you know. That's what it is, fam squad. That's what it is. I got me. Ghost Million. Not really much of a, uh, you know, it's heavy metal, if anything. Formerly, it had a bit more of a uh, black metal tinge to it, and I think, you know, some of the more aggressive cuts sort of streak in some real metal, but mostly this is, you know, some hard rock, heavy metal type stuff. Very wonderful, though. Like these vibrant, grand orchestrations of uh, rock music with you know, heavy occult undertones and themes. Tracks like Cerise are absolutely mesmerizing with how beautiful they are. But yeah, this is a you know great little release. It's on black. Uh, and something that is cool that they included as a very uh, you know, big on visuals type of act. They got this book with these wonderful, wonderful illustrations depicting each of the uh, tracks base ideas so that's spirit i won't show you anymore you can probably find it online and you know if you can't so get the wax why not so you know ghost and of course the ghost face killer dude the mystery of chess boxing is so good but uh yeah Iron Man. This is, um, Ghostface is probably my favorite, uh, Wu Tang member. You know, obviously, well, not obviously, but, you know, uh, historically, he has been, uh, the most consistent, I think, Wu Tang member. What with this, uh, the, 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 the Supreme Clientele. Fish Scale is one that I actually ended up growing up with. I started listening to him rap to some level around 2007, which I thought was a pretty good year for it. Um, and that one really stuck with me, especially the champ. But, uh, you know, coming back to this fantastic-ass record, still very much, you know, influenced by that traditional Wu-Tang sound. He's very much in that headspace at the time of this release, and it shows. But, yeah, very nice record. Ooh, classic Wu-Tang. Need to get more uh, ghost face, but, you know, that will come with time. Girl Talk with freaking Night Ripper. This is my favorite Girl Talk record, and I like Girl Talk a lot. Uh, I think that he was a major frontrunner in bringing those, like, 
way more danceable mashups. I mean, he took Plunderphonics in a far more accessible and dancey and fun direction, taking these uh, usually um, his thing was taking rappers and putting them over more classic popular uh, beats from the 80s, from whatnot. And obviously we get strung together with this, that, and the other, and it gets reimagined into these entirely different and unique projects. Um, I think one of my favorites is where he takes these like boom bap drums from, I don't even rightly recall what, and puts it over uh, and puts that bit from California, the uh, California, here I come. I think that was like a really major thing for me when I was a kid and it just always kind of stuck to me. I was like, wow, dude, that's fucking dope as shit. But um, that is a great record. And uh, for its label, I guess it would call it, Illegal Arts, to do this when they're not really even a vinyl pressing type deal, they did a great job on this. The cardstock's really thick, the pressing's really thick, and of course, you know, it's got the uh, track list, some of the credits, and of course, a big ass fucking slab of text dedicated to the people that were sampled on this. It's really interesting to read through those and try to like connect the bits and pieces to the ones that aren't like immediately catching for you. Most of them, you know, you'll be able to be like, oh yeah, I remember that from this or that from this, but sometimes it's like, oh dude, is that what that was? Right? Maybe it's there. It's it's really nifty for someone that's like, it's like a fucking dork like me. So yeah, great. <laughs> So yeah, um, uh, with that, I think I'll end it off on these records here. Uh, Godspeed, you Black Emperor, with uh, the fucking A-sharp, a F-sharp, a infinity symbol, bloob de dap uh, right all here. Great, great EP, argued to be one of the best EPs ever recorded. However, I hate this packaging, and... It's it's a great record. I should clarify right now. It is a record that I I love. You know, it's 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 good. It's real good. Godspeed is you know fantastic. It's not third wave. It's second wave. You clowns. Um, but yeah, this is a piece of shit. Because look at it. First of all, it's flimsy as fuck. This looks like this feels like it was glued on. This well the, the train wheels, and it's just like ugh, it's so whack. And uh, what's more. It comes with the fucking cryptic bullshit that uh, they're so fondly associated with. This little, this little print of the train, and this little envelope, including, and I always forget the exact wording of what this is, uh, but just a bunch of this, that's a... Uh, a piece of this shitty looking metal that I don't even know what it's for. Uh, and come on, get out of here, you. Wait for it. Wait for it. Yeah, there we go. This little blueprint of a uh, labeled faulty schematics of a ruined machine. I don't. I'm not gonna fucking decrypt your bullshit, dude. Come on. Come on. I mean, I'm sure, like, if you're buying this, you probably, there's a decent chance that you're, like, a huge stan is willing to read into this to the nth degree. But, fucking, come on, dude. It's, don't, don't clown me on this shit, dude. I don't fuck with that vision. But, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's uh, that's my most frustrating piece of my collection, and uh, then of course, not as frustrating, the uh, lift your twenty fifth in heaven. This is probably their most well known piece, and it feels like it's the cardstock is just cardboard, and of course it's got like a similar thing. This kind of details in brief how the record is, you know, like formed by them so it's much more straightforward but yeah great 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 it's post-rock 
I didn't say, it, but it's it's post rock for those that you know don't know what that band is. Um, so yeah, that is gonna do it, and we are making our way downtown.